everybody this is Tracy here for another edition of a view from Tracy's point and we're here to recap married to medicine season 5 episode 8 which was titled fly girls and low riders <laughs> opens up and we have like a juxtaposition between Mariah and her mom Miss Lucy and then um, Dr. Heavenly was meeting and having lunch with Quad and so they're basically going back and forth giving their perspectives on what happened at the uh, Mother's Day brunch that Mariah threw for her mom. And so, of course, Mariah and her mom thinks that everything was just beautiful. It went off without a hitch. They talk about Miss Renee and how disrespectful she was. And then uh, basically, Contessa needs to find her some new help because you don't allow people to disrespect you like that. And then Miss Lucy tells Mariah, you know, that Heavenly tried to apologize to her, but, you know, she told Heavenly that she needed a little more time, that she just couldn't forgive her right off the bat, but, you know, she was going to think about her apology and consider it. So then when we get over there to uh, Quad and Heavenly, I could not believe how messy Heavenly was being, and it just brings more focus on the fact that this season of Married to Medicine is just... You know, when you have run your course and you really don't have nothing to talk about, it, then you start making up stuff. So basically, Heavenly is telling uh, Quad just how awful the brunch was, that it was ghetto, it wasn't good, and, you know, she tried, and how uh, Mariah lied about wanting to get back in the good graces of the group, and she, um, when she gave Toya the award, you know, for being the stay-at-home mom, you know, she just did it, not because she wanted to honor Toya, but she was just trying to throw shade at um, Heavenly so she could make the, ins you know, bring up the fact that Heavenly had disrespected her mother, you know, but she says that she apologized to Miss Lucy, but Miss Lucy said she wasn't about to accept her apology, and so, you know, Heavenly was putting a little more salt on it than what really needed to be there, and of course, Quad was sitting there, Ooh, child see that's what I told you child and, you know just eating it all up and just you know throwing her little shade and encouraging heavenly to be messy and to come at uh to come at Mariah not take Mariah at her word when she say that she wants everybody to get back together but isn't it funny how they all want Mariah off the show but it takes Mariah being on the show <laughs> to stir up the controversy and everything. So they need to make up their minds if they can really survive without Mariah. If they need uh, Mariah on there to do what she do. Then we have a scene with Contessa and Miss Renee. <laughs> ah, well that... Miss Renee got some problems. I think she might have some um, mental issues going on. And Contessa better watch out for some voodoo dolls or something be showing up in her house. But Contessa asked uh, Miss Renee if she remembers what happened at Mariah's party. And that uh, I think Miss Renee said that she does, but she felt really out of place. And that's what made her act the way that she acts. But Contessa said in her confessional that she thinks that um, Miss Renee is jealous of all the women and their credentials and accomplishments in life. So after Miss Renee uh, made it clear that she doesn't care what the group thinks of her, Contessa says that uh, she does and she wants to plan the event. So like a makeup event for the way that Miss Renee uh, acted at the brunch. And so they get together and talking and everything and they decide that they're going to throw this 90s theme party. And Miss Renee, now she was... I think I was kind of like in Miss Renee's corner at this point because when they brought in the event planner, Miss Renee, you know, Contessa was saying, oh, I want to have a red carpet. And Miss Renee was like, it's a 90s party. Why you need that red carpet? You know, then she was like, oh, I want to serve this. And, you know, so Miss Renee was, you know, 
I didn't like her delivery when she was telling Contessa that her ideas weren't good, but I did like the fact that she did stand up and say, hey, this is a 90s party. It's supposed to be fun and flirty. It's not supposed to be, it's supposed to reflect where you guys came from, not where you are now. So don't be all bougie and trying to have all this expensive stuff when that's not what the theme of the party is really about. Then we move over to Jackie and um, Curtis. <laughs> so Jackie, you know, she at the crib alone on her computer working as usual, which is why she's alone right now <laughs> because she can't forget about work. So we find out that her and uh, Curtis have talked and did I say, I think I said Curtis and Dr. Jackie, not Dr. Curtis and Jackie. But anyway, we know it's Curtis and he ain't no doctor. But anyway, he shows up and he was driving this, um, this car, like from the 50s or something, has he always had that car? I don't remember seeing that car, but Curtis know he is too doggone tall to be driving that car. And so when he comes in the house, like you really, whenever him and Jackie are standing next to each other, he's like the jolly green giant. So of course, you know, things were a little tense and, you know, Jackie was a little apprehensive. So the two of them get to talking and, you know, Curtis was really willing to apologize and let her know that he still love her and he want her back. And we find out that he's been sending Jackie flowers and gifts and everything. And she, you know, let him know that he can't buy back her affection. And he said, well, I wouldn't try and buy back your affection. I was just letting you know <laughs> that you were on my mind. I was thinking about you. So basically what I got from that whole little dialogue is kind of reminded me, remember that movie with Vivica Fox and Morris Chestnut called Two Can Play That Game and Vivica had all these steps, like when she caught him cheating or whatever, and she had all those steps that he had to go through in order to win her back. Well, that's kind of how Jackie was acting. And I'm sitting up thinking, girl, you gonna mess around here and play hard to get and don't get God, and that man gonna be the moved on and found him somebody else for real. And then I also didn't like the fact that Jackie still does not want to play, want to own up to her part in the breakdown of their marriage. Now, granted, Curtis was dead damn wrong for going out there, uh, having the affair and going out of town with the other woman. But like I said in my last video, I think he just did that to get Jackie's attention, to let her know that you are in jeopardy of losing your husband. Wasn't a good way to go about it, but that, you know, that's how men think and that's what he wanted to do. So that's what he did. But at the end of the day, I don't see their marriage working out if Jackie is not willing to admit that her contribution to the breakdown of the marriage, the fact that she works so much that she throws her heart into everything, trying to get over, you know, the things that have happened to her. And I'm thinking maybe Jackie need to go see a psychiatrist because you can't be holding on to the past. I mean, things happen to us. Okay, you have breast cancer, but God blessed you to survive that breast cancer. As a result of the breast cancer, you now can't have children. Okay, but you had a stepchild that you were able to help raise. So it's like she's not seeing the, the, the pluses in the situation. She only wants to focus on the minuses and the things that have been taken away from her. And I'm like, but you still are alive. You still have a husband. You still have a future. And I can't remember if it was Jackie that didn't want to adopt or if it was Curtis that didn't want to adopt. You guys let me know in the comments, but I'm thinking that even that... At some point, they could have bridged the gap and then maybe, because if it was Curtis that didn't want to adopt, maybe it was because he realized that their marriage was falling apart. So why are you going to bring a child into this situation that's already messed up? But anyway, um, that was that situation with Jackie and Curtis. And she said, you know, she, they can't go out on a date and be seen out in public and then people be thinking that they don't, you know, she done forgave him. <laughs> I'm thinking, why the hell are you worried about what people thinking? Like, this is your marriage. At the end of the day, you're the one that's got to go home to an empty house. Not the people out there. Well, the people out there judging you are probably going home to an empty house. And that's why they're judging you. But anyway, girl, you better stop playing around. So then later on, well, she told Curtis that, you know, they can't go out and be seen in public. But he's more than welcome to stop by the house and they can talk. And I guess she'll cook dinner. He can cook dinner or something like that. But they're going to play it slow and see where things go. 
Oh, and then it was that scene where he said he wanted to fix things, and you know we saw it on the commercial, and she was like, you know, how do you fix humiliation? <laughs> okay, well you can't fix humiliation. You either got to decide that he humiliated me, he apologized, I'm gonna forgive him for it, or you gonna let that humiliation take over you, and you're not gonna forgive him. But at some point, Jackie, you need to uh, make a decision because this has been going on way too long because. Didn't um her it was last year when it like this been going on for what a year now? Y'all need to crap or get off the pot and go on about your business at this point. Then she calls Simone over, you know, one to let her know what went down between her and Curtis, and the other was to show her the lookbook. Now when she pulled out that lookbook, I was sitting there saying to myself, wasn't this like two seasons ago that they was that whole scene went down where they was doing the photo shoot and all that and then uh last year the ladies wanted to make it up to her so they did the little uh photo shoot when they were all in hawaii why did it take so long i mean they got print on demand out there now jackie wasn't no reason for this project to have taken a year a year and a half to come to fruition but I'm glad you got the book. Um, I, here's a nice book. <laughs> so I'm glad you did accomplish that. But, you know, moving on to the real reason you called Simone over there, which was to tell her that Curtis came by the house. And so Jackie was acting like a little 16-year-old and had a little spat with her boyfriend. And I'm just like, mm, I'm not really feeling this part of the storyline right now. You know, so Simone says that, um, you know, encouraging Jackie into foolishness, telling her that she ain't do nothing wrong and that, you know, Curtis, um, but she also feels that Curtis is living both of their pain. And, you know, basically, um, Simone, I think she wants Jackie and Curtis to get back together, but she needs to stop co-signing with Jackie with the fact that uh, she ain't a part of the situation and that everything is on Curtis. And so Curtis got to fix everything and make everything better. But she's still over there harboring her resentment and what she going through. Then they had a cute little scene with all the guys where they were uh, down in Cecil's man cave. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Curtis, now that you and Jackie ain't talking, you can't be uh, with the fellas. Y'all can't hang out. They can't invite you over no more. But I did see, I think I was on Twitter, and they posted a picture of all the guys together. Something they had went to in the last week or so. And Curtis was with them. So I don't know if that means that Curtis and Jackie are back together or if you know, they got permission to invite invite Curtis and hang out with Curtis but it was good seeing all the guys together and and I think was Aiden in the picture no I don't think Aiden was in the picture I think Aiden was so hurt by that diss with Quad's birthday that he probably ain't gonna never be a part of the men group anymore but anyway the guys get to talking and so Cecil informs them that he took I think he said forty five thousand dollars out of him and Simone's um bank account <laughs> to invest in this app that um, some friends of his had put together. And so it was basically an app. Oh God, what was the app for? Was it the find kids or the help kids? <laughs> it was something to do with kids. But he thought it was a great investment. And because him and um, Simone ain't really getting along that well, he didn't tell her about it. But of course, when she found out, she wasn't happy about it. But he didn't care because he said that was something he could do. And part of that money was his money. So then... Um, what the other boy named Dr. G? Dr. G brings up the fact, you know, that him and Simone, not him. Then Dr. G brings up the fact that him and Quad, you know, they still fighting and things seem to be, you know, getting worse and that, you know, that's the kind of stuff. Uh, Quad got mad, you know, when he bought the car and didn't tell her. But I don't remember him bringing up the fact that and telling them that Quad had bought that $170,000 truck. Because that's what I was sitting there waiting on him to drop on them and didn't tell him about it just to get the guy's reaction. But I don't think he ever brought it up in the conversation. But then he did tell the guys that him and Quad had sat down and talked and Quad wasn't able to tell him specifically what she needs from him. You know, as Cecil says that it sounds like, you know, they're having communication issues with each other. And, you know, basically the same thing Simone had said that, you know, women are from Venus, men are from Mars, and the conversations are just totally different. And I find it quite interesting that Simone and Cecil are the voice of reasoning and they're giving everybody else um relationship counseling but they damn relationship falling apart so who is giving them counsel like who's counseling them on how to get their act together 
So I found that was really interesting. So while the guys were having their little um, get together, Miss Quad invited the white chick over, Emily. So of course, um, she couldn't get um, Toya to jump on her bandwagon and stroke her ego and tell her, you know, that the way she was treating her husband was a great thing. So she brought over um, Emily so that she could uh, get Emily to co-sign her foolishness. And of course, Emily was right there for it. Like, girl, I wouldn't do that. Girl, I wouldn't put up with that. Girl, mm -mm. girl, you did the right thing. <laughs> Just sitting there like, <laughs> but we all do it. Yeah, we all do. We all have that friend that we can go to about whatever nonsense it is that we know is going to co-sign with our nonsense. So I can't uh, jump on quad too much with doing that because I think every woman does it. But then at the end of the little luncheon, oh, they was drinking wine out of these wine glasses that was bigger than their face. Now, is that supposed to be the new thing <laughs> that they're doing now? Because I thought they looked utterly ridiculous drinking out them glasses. But anyway, she decided to invite Emily uh, to go with her to this um, 90s party. So I guess um, Dr. G wasn't invited to the party. So back over at um, Contessa's, it's the day of the party and they're trying to get things ready. And Miss um, Renee just lost her dog on mine. She threw, I don't, know, I don't know if we ever saw what she threw at Contessa, but she threw something. And I know when um, Contessa's husband came into the room, he had like a toy guitar or something like that in his hands. So I'm assuming he had picked that up off the floor and that was what uh, Miss Renee had to throw at Contessa. And uh, Miss Renee say, fire me because I don't give a F-U-C-K. <laughs> and it looks like, um, I don't know, look like Contessa might need her new nanny, like for real, for real this time. So anyway, they get in the house set up. I didn't see nothing too spectacular about this 90s party. But I did like the fact that they brought in the uh, lowriders. And who all remember the lowriders? I used to date this guy that had this truck. It was a lowrider truck. He loved that truck. And I mean, if you could like take the top off, you could lift the back thing. It, whew, them days were something. <laughs> we used to have fun back then and just seeing everybody showing up. Okay, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So they had the low riders truck, low rider trucks parked out front. And then they had some um, dancers like from In Living Color. And have, speaking of In Living Color, have y'all seen the video with Bruno Mars and uh, Cardi B? I'm not really a Bruno Mars fan, but I like that video. It's cute and it's like a throwback to um, the show In Living Color. So I thought that was cute. So they had those dancers, you know, with the um, hip hop gear on that was greeting the people when they pulled up. And so that was probably about the nicest part of the whole party. Oh, and then she had the um, Alizé. <laughs> had the bottles of Alizé, you know, remember just taking it back to the head <laughs> with the Alizé, but Toya was trying to be all bougie, like she was missing the point that they was, it was like a real 90s party, and she was like, she needs some real alcohol, she ain't drinking that Alizé, because that was going to make her sick and all that, but anyway, everybody shows up, and they have on their cute little 90s outfits, and um, I think Dr. Helmley was supposed to have been Pepper from Salt and Pepper, and that's really like the only one that I really remember. But I know everybody was cute except for Quad. She decided to roll up there like a hoe. Like, I don't know what that getup was supposed to be that she had on. But she had on some drawers and a um, midriff top. And then had a fanny pack. And I guess the fanny pack was supposed to be her homage to the um, 90s. But she just so trash. Like, I just... I cannot stand Quad. Now, every show you got to have that one person that you don't like. And for this show, it is Quad. She is such a pain in the ass. And I wish she would get gone. But anyway, um, oh, I think Mariah said that she was a video vixen. And I, I, guess I can't really remember what all everybody was supposed to be. But anyway, the party was going good. Everybody was having a good time until um, Dr. Simone had too much tequila to drink. And then all of a sudden, she decided to bring up the whole toast that Mariah did when she was honoring Toya. Oh, there was a part where, um, back to the outfits, <laughs> I just remember. 
could tell so I asked them if they were um they brought their swimwear because I guess she wanted to go swimming and so they all started pulling up their outfits so when Simone pulled up her outfit and I still can't remember what Simone was supposed to be but Heavenly uh was looking at that I think when she was in her confessional she said that uh no she wasn't even in a confessional uh, she was standing right there she said that Simone looks like she's eight months pregnant with her old lady <laughs> Like, y'all was so stupid. Oh, and then um, Toya and Eugene got into this little thing because Eugene, uh, he rolled up and he had on some new Jordans and Toya told him that uh, they were supposed to spend over $150 on their outfits for the party. And Eugene told her that um, he was working multiple shifts so he can spend what he pleases. <laughs> and I agree with you on that, Eugene. But back to Simone when she um, did her little reenactment of Mariah giving Toya that gift. So she basically tells Toya that so she basically tells Mariah that she knew she was throwing shade when she did that. And, you know, so she was just making a joke out of it. And then all of a sudden, Mariah was like, okay, did you really feel that way? Because that wasn't my intentions. Did you guys take it that way? And then Simone was like, you know, everybody been talking about it. Even Dr. Jackie said it. And Jackie was over there like, damn, keep my name out of this. And that mess went from zero to 100, <laughs> like five seconds, because then Heavily um, got her backbone and finally got a, you know, was able to say what she really wanted to say about the whole situation. So then she started coming at um, Mariah, and then Mariah said something, and then Heavily's like, yeah, ma. And then she cut herself off, talking about, see, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I didn't say it. And then that um, sent Mariah over the top. So then she, you know, got up and them two went to cussing each other out and going back and forth. And I think Mariah told um, told um, Dr. Damon he better get his woman because <laughs> she didn't want to have to beat Heavenly's behind. And then Heavenly got upset was like, how you going to tell me he need to get me? So they was just arguing and oh my God, it was a hot ghetto mess it was like it just like that y'all ruined contessa's um apology party which y'all didn't even know it was an apology because miss uh renee had then got gone <laughs> she had to show up i had earlier but anyway guys that was it that was it that was it <laughs> so let me know what you thought about the episode um if there's something you want to add to the conversation put it in the comments below rate the video subscribe to the channel and you can also share the video on your social media platforms and you can do all of that um, with the buttons below and until the next time i'll talk to you guys later bye bye <laughs>